Hey everyone, I'm Carol Rodriguez and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be demonstrating a basic still life painting of pear. I will be doing videos and tutorials a few times a month now, so please make sure that you subscribe to my channel by touching the subscribe now button on the bottom right of the video as well as the bell on the right of the description to make sure that you're notified of new videos every time they come out. As you can see here, my drawing is already transferred onto a toned canvas. I'll have a video uh, link posted in the description for how to tone a canvas. And here I'm starting to lay down some burnt umber and some burnt sienna. This is in oils. You can do it with acrylics. The only thing is with acrylics, your ability to blend will be a little bit different. It's a bit harder to blend with acrylics. That's what the beauty of oil is, is it's so smooth and and because it stays wet for a long time, you can blend colors really nicely. So here I'm keeping on working at the colors, I'm laying down my colors and blending them as I go. And I do use liquid mixed in with my oil paints, only a small amount, maybe about 20% liquid to my paint. And I lay everything down, smooth everything out. And I will be mixing a combination of blue, white, and yellow to make my green. And then as I paint, I will be adding more colors to it. Here I'm laying down a foundation of a very light green. I deliberately did it this way to show you how flat a painting looks when you only have one color laid down. And this is why we'll be mixing other colors into the green mixture later on, which will create differences in values and tone. And um, here I start laying down some Alizarin Crimson Permanent. And this will be the rear of the pear where it will be darker. And I'm starting to build in some darker colors in there to create some value. And I'm going to start adding in some yellow in my greens because it's, it's a little bit more on the yellow side in the pear. And I'm still adding in some colors and building up my first layer. And I'm adding a little bit more yellow as well as some burnt umber in the back of the pear. And now I have a dry, clean fan brush and I'm just smoothing out everything on the pear. And I dab away at some of the paint in the middle where there will be white highlights being laid down later on in the video. And here I have a mixture of white, cobalt blue, and burnt umber because white is never just white. And I'm laying down my first layer of the tablecloth. Keep in mind the whitest part of the tablecloth will be in the rear. And as you move up to the front of the canvas, the tablecloth should be darker. And here I'm just laying down a basic shape for my shadow and we'll work on that later on. And I'm lightening it up a little bit. And this will need to dry a bit. So I let this painting dry overnight after the first layer. So here it's still the first layer that I'm working on. I'm smoothing out my edges. I like to work with smooth edges instead of hard edges. It's just visually more appealing to have smooth edges. I'm laying in a bit of the white where the highlights are going to be. Just a thin layer of whites. And I take a dry, soft brush and I just blend it in. And I'm adding a little bit more red, building up that color. I'm just glazing that over dry red paint. And adding it a bit of brown in the reds too towards the rear to darken it up. By the way, I do have a PDF of this created and um, at the end I'll have instructions and in the description I'll have directions to my website where you can sign up to get um, the PDF for this by joining my newsletter. It's absolutely free and I have more details laid out as well as photos and a reference photo that you can use to paint your own pair. Here I have a fan brush and I'm smoothing out the colors and blending them out more. And I'm starting to add a little bit more of the darker colors in the greens to kind of define the pear more. Still working in a bit on my background. Working on the shadow. What I have here is a combination of cobalt blue and burnt umber to make a nice rich deep black. 
and then adding some more of the burnt umber and the outer edges to darken it up. As you can see, this was done over dry paint. I'm going to want to leave the middle a little bit lighter around the pear just to create more light around the pear. So I will be fixing that later on. Right now, I just added some more burnt sienna. And now I added a tad of white to that mixture of burnt sienna and burnt umber. And I'm working that in there, sanding it out as I go and blending it. And still working on that shadow with my mixture of black, which is not black, it's burnt umber and cobalt blue. And then still working on the pear. Adjusting my greens because it's not just one solid color of green as you work on the pear. If you look closely at any pear, there will be several shades of greens as you go along. So I'm just working it, trying to get all those greens in there accurately. The green on the bottom is much brighter than on the top, so I make I made a brighter green for the bottom. As you can see, I love to work in layers. That's how I paint. Um, I find a common mistake that a lot of beginner painters do is they don't apply, they don't put down enough layers so that you see splotches of color all over the canvas and nothing is uniform. So don't be afraid to add in those layers. If you need to add three, four, five, six layers, don't be afraid of doing that. It's better to have more layers. Just remember that with oil paint, it's fat over lean. So save your fattier or thicker layers for the end. And here I have a dry clean brush and I smooth the colors out and I wipe off excess paint as I go along. And again, I'm taking my dry clean brush, my fluffy brush, and I'm smoothing out my edges. Always trying to make sure I don't have any hard edges. And I'm going over the rest of the painting as well and I'm adding another glaze of red. And as always, I have a little bit of liquid in there as I go along. The liquid helps speed up the drying so that you can work faster. Otherwise, your waiting time will be a lot longer when you're working with oils. So I do love to work with the liquid so I can work faster. And here I'm building up shadows on the bottom of the pear by adding a bit of burnt umber and burnt sienna in my green mixture. And I'm working on the base of the stem. The back of the stem is darker because it's not in the light, so I have some of my black mixture with a bit more burnt umber in it. And the, the front outer um, area of the stem will have burnt sienna. In the middle, I just added a bit of white to the burnt sienna mixture to show where the light hits on the stem of the pear. And there's that white going in. It's not pure white, it's mixed into the burnt umber. And I keep building until I define the shape I want and building the shades I want. And then I decided here to lighten it up just a little bit more around so that we could see the stem more. And I keep working the paint there, smoothing things as I go along. I use a lot of dry brushes and I like to keep a lot of my old brushes. They get all fluffy and worn after a while so I like to keep them and I'll use those regularly just to smooth and soften edges and to dab at paint, pick up excess paint and I just like to use them to make softer paintings. And here I'm building up light on the front of the pear. created this by adding a bit more white to my green mixture. And I keep building up that white. It's not pure white, it's mixed into the green so that the over effect is just green instead of just white. Here it's white where the highlight is so I added some pure white there. I just dab along as I go, spreading it out more. So as you spread it out more, it will mix into the paint underneath, which is still wet. So it's not going to be a pure, pure white until we get to the very end where we'll just put some white just here and there. And I keep building 
back up more. And as you lay down those those lighter colors in the front and the darker colors in the back, you're building value and you're getting a more realistic painting. You're defining things more and it's starting to look more and more realistic as you go along. And still working with the colors, the reds, the burnt siennas mixed into the greens and the reds. And wiping off excess and smoothing with a dry, fluffy brush. I had to let this painting dry about three times in between coats so that I can keep working because it is oil painting. It's um, some people like to work alla prima. This one here is not an alla prima painting. I did let it dry in between coats so that I didn't create mud, but I was able to glaze over top of the paint and keep building up layers without creating mud. That's not to say that you're always creating mud whenever you paint a la prima though, it's just that for this particular painting, I wanted to paint on a dry surface and not a la prima. It might seem like a lot of work going into the oil painting and it is. It's a, that's why you like to build up layers. And here I'm starting to add some details on a dried painting. And what I did here is some of my green mixture, the darker green with a very fine liner brush, a zero zero liner brush and just very gently dabbing at the painting. And as I get towards the middle, my little dots are going to get darker. I'm going to add some burnt umber into my green mixture because the the little specks on the pears are not all the same color as your eye travels across the pear from front to back. The specks on the front will be a lighter green, then the middle specks will be a medium colored green, and then the specks will be even darker towards the end. And because a real pear is full of um, occlusions and scratches and dents, I am also painting those in so that our pear looks a lot more realistic. And I'm painting those in using some burnt umber and some of the reds. And I'm just painting them in as I go along and I will be highlighting them as well also because some of those scratches will have highlights where the, the light is hitting them. So I'm just going along, putting those in and there went one little highlight there and some lighter green in some areas as well because as I said earlier the pear is not just one color. And here I'm adding a shade of mauve to show where the tablecloth is reflecting on the rear of the pear. And I'll be highlighting up on top with some green. And so now I'm taking a dry brush and I blend that in as I go along and then take my, my liner brush and just work in those details and smooth out that reflective light in the back. And then I keep, I keep working out my red and my shades in the back as well as that reflection, making sure that everything is accurate and little highlights around the mix. And the base of the stem as well, it needs a little bit more detailing. And I'm doing my highlighting and smoothing out. And there you have it, we have a completed pair. So do be sure to subscribe so that you can see more videos. There will be animals as well. And don't forget to join my newsletter so that you can get the free PDF with more details on how you can paint this pair. And that is available on my website at www.carolrodrigue.com. I'll have the links all in the description. So thanks for watching this video and um, I'll have another video soon. Take care.